Hello, happy Friday. It's good to see you all again. And uh, has, my, has my beard grown any longer? This is my goal, this is my personal goal during this time is to grow my first beard of my life. So we'll just see how this is going. So that's what I'm doing on a Friday. How about you guys? How about we read another book in the series from Diana Aston and Sylvia Long? This book is A Rock is Lively. And much like the butterfly is patient and a seed is sleepy, we once again see the author using personification to describe something uh, with human or animal characteristics that we wouldn't normally ascribe to a rock. A rock is lively. All right, let's begin. This. Mm, my goodness, this is beautiful. Let me just take a second and pause and just take a look at all of the variety of sort of rocks and minerals here. The rock is lively. A rock is lively. Bubbling like a pot of soup, deep, deep beneath the earth's crust, liquid, molten, boiling. Depending on what type of rock it is, a rock melts at a temperatures between 1300 and 2400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 700 and between 700 and 1300 degrees Celsius. Bubbling up. A rock is mixed up. Hmm. All rocks are made from a mix of ingredients called minerals. Just as a batter of flour, butter, and sugar makes a cookie, a batter of minerals makes a rock. The recipe for a rock might include minerals like aluminum, copper, diamond, fluorite, gold, gypsum, lead, nickel, platinum, quartz, silver, sulfur, tin, topaz, and turquoise. And many more. A rock is galactic. Outer space is a shower of rocky fireworks. Meteoroids are rocks that range in size from a grain of sand to a basketball. They become meteors or shooting stars when they streak through Earth's atmosphere and vaporize. Sometimes pieces of the meteor aren't vaporized and land on Earth's surface. These are called meteorites. Over here, we have asteroids. Asteroids are gigantic chunk chunks of rock and metal. They can weigh millions of tons. The largest known asteroid is 650 miles in diameter. Diameter means the length from one side to another, straight through the middle. <clears throat> It would take a person 352 hours or nearly 15 days to walk around it. A rock is old. The oldest known rocks on earth were formed billions of years before the sky turned from green to blue, before dinosaurs thundered across the earth, before humans learned how to make fire. The oldest rocks ever found are nearly 4.5 billion years old. A rock is huge. Considered by many to be the world's largest rock, Australia's Mount Augustus is a sandstone rock with an elevation or height of 3,628 feet above sea level, almost 1,000 feet higher than the world's tallest skyscraper. And rocks are tiny. 
the carpets of sand on the floors and shores of oceans, lakes, and rivers come from larger rocks that have been ground through weathering into tiny grains. A rock is helpful. Some birds swallow stones to help them digest food. As the muscles in the gizzards of their stomachs move, food is chewed by, or chewed or crushed by rocks in the same way that humans use teeth to break down food. Crocodiles, seals, and sea lions also ingest rocks. The extra weight or ballast helps them dive deeper and stay steady in water. Sea otters lie on their backs and use rocks to crack open shells on their stomachs. Seagulls drop mollusks onto rocks to break apart their shells. Chimpanzees and crows crack the hard shells of nuts on rocks. A rock is surprising. Some rocks need to be broken open to reveal their beauty. Geodes found hollow rocks found mostly in deserts or beds of volcanic ash hide sparkly crystals. The crystals were once liquids, but trapped inside a rock for thousands of years, they changed into jewels of many colors. Agates, too, with their colorful layers created by liquid deposits, are often found in volcanic rock. A rock is inventive. Ooh, do you remember what other animal or object that the author described as inventive. A rock is inventive. Long ago, humans chiseled rocks into sharp edged weapons and tools. Flaky flint and obsidian rocks were chipped into arrowheads, spear points, axes, and hammers. Rough granite sandstone and lava rocks were shaped into mortars and pestles used for grinding seeds, rice, nuts, chilies, and garlic into food. Today, humans use rocks to make cement and bricks and paper and pencils, glass and toothpaste. Oh. A rock is creative, yes. Tens of thousands of years ago, before there was writing, ancient peoples told stories through symbols with colors made from minerals. They painted pictographs on cave walls, rock shelters, and ledges. They chipped and pecked the surface of stones to make petroglyphs. In more recent history, artists and builders have chiseled great sculptures and monuments from all kinds of rock. A rock is recycled. Hmm. Sedimentary rocks like coal and limestone have eroded over time into smaller pieces of sand, pebbles, and gravel, then were pressed together uh, like a layer cake with fossils and seashells and decayed plants. Metamorphic rocks began as sedimentary or igneous but were baked and squeezed so hard by heat and pressure that they became metamorphic rocks like slate and marble. Igneous rocks are formed by magma. When magma erupts through volcanoes, it cools and hardens into rocks like granite and pumice. Pumice is so lightweight, it floats. A rock doesn't hurry. Over thousands of years, thousands of millions of years, it changes from one form to another. This is called the rock cycle. In a process called erosion, a rock, a rock is squashed and scraped by glaciers, whirled by waves and rain, and pushed deep into the earth until it turns 
into magma. Then a rock is once again lively. Ooh, take a look at all these types of rocks. I hope you enjoyed our series from Diana Aston and Sylvia Long. I know that I did. I hope you all will have a great Friday. Think about what you learned from this book that you hadn't known about rocks before. And think about the words that the author uses to describe these rocks, these seeds and butterflies. Think about how you could use these words in your own writing to describe uh, things that maybe we wouldn't usually describe. Using figurative language, we can create a more informative, creative, and exciting writing. All right, y'all. Have a great Friday. I hope to see you in office hours in a little bit. Bye.